Does anybody have any questions about the project? Yes. Yes. Uh, we texted uh, email you yesterday that we can't find companies that are like two centers or more like each day. That's more than okay. So I'll explain about that. So. She said that she's having trouble finding a company which is more than one business. So if we go to Yahoo, what's the company you chose? Uh, we tried like Coca-Cola, uh, Google. We tried Let's Google. try Google. Uh, so if we go to Yahoo and we go to Yahoo Finance, and we type in here Google, if we start typing the name of the company, then uh, the stock comes up. So we can click here, on the left we have we have all the information right, about Google. So we can click on profile or industry here. If we click on industry, we can see what industry Google is involved in. Here it says sector technology, industry, internet, information provider. That's Google's main industry. But if we click on profile, we can see if it's involved in any other industries. Under profile for Google, we have business summary here. So, in the business summary, it tells us what business Google is involved in. So, uh, it offers YouTube and Organizing, organizing information. It has Google Apps, Google Maps, and Google Plus. App Engine, and so on. So, it may be that this company is just involved in inter internet information provider. So this just has one industry. So, if we choose another company, like Disney, we can find, again, if you look in the uh, profile, we can see that uh, Disney, it's clearly written here, Disney operates within five segments, media networks, studio entertainment, consumer products, and a new one, interactive, that we didn't, we didn't look at, right? Interactive is a new thing. So, uh, what you need to do is you can go to the list of companies on the S&P 500, there's 500 companies. Choose a company, go to Yahoo Finance, go to Profile. Business Summary, it's going to tell you what business sectors the company is involved in. Okay? But anyway, in uh, 10K like statistics that are yes. to consolidate, uh, uh, we checked a lot of organizations and um, the income and uh, another information was only like for the whole company, not divided into sectors. Uh, so, you mean they're not giving the breakdown by yeah, the yes. sector? Because we checked uh, maybe 30 companies yesterday and there was no information. So, for example, if we check uh, for Disney, for Disney. Yeah, for Disney, you want me to check for a different company? Yeah. So what company? Uh, for example, you know CBS Pharmacy, they have two sectors, but uh, yeah. in their like income statement... What is CBS Pharmacy, two sectors? Uh, retail, uh, retail pharmacy and like uh, for, um, for a lot of groups, for big groups. Okay, let's just take a random company then from the S&P 500 and check and see. So, if we go here, we can uh, to Google. We can just put in S&P 500 index members. So, list of. S&P 500 companies. So let's take one that we probably have never heard of, just to see what. Uh, let's say uh, Corning, Corning Inc. Have you ever heard of Corning Inc.? No. Yeah. You have heard of Corning Inc.? So 
Here we can see corning in GLW. So again, if we go to uh, profile, we can get the business summary. This company operates through five segments. Display technology, optical communications, environmental technologies, specialty materials and life sciences. Okay, so five different segments. So then we, we have to look for their 10K. So we go to SEC filings, right? It's written on the it's written on the page. You go to SEC filings here on the left. Okay, then in the SEC filings you have the 10K, which is the annual report. Okay, click on the annual report, full filing. Then in the annual report, we have the financial statements like the balance sheet and the income statement. But we want to find some extra data. So we look at this, notes to consolidated financial statements. And then in here we're going to search for revenue. So we do control and F and type in revenue. So we should go down through this uh, until we find some table. And we should have rev revenue by segment. So here we can see revenue by their segments, right? Display technologies, optical communications, environmental technologies. Okay? So maybe you just have bad luck with your companies. I just chose this company at random. So you can use this company if you like. Okay. Or just choose another random company. Uh, for yes. how many segments we need to do calculations? It's easier if you find a company with just two segments. But five segments is okay too. It just means that with five segments, you just need to do the weighted average is going to be longer. Weighted average calculation of each segment for your business. Okay, so it might be easy to find a company with just two segments, but you could try to find a company with two or three segments. Okay, any more questions about the project? So just use this 10k document to find some. Use this 10k document to find out the revenue, about the worldwide revenue, also. Where, what countries do they get their revenue in? If you can't find, sometimes they don't have the information in the 10k document, then you can just Google, right? Try to find the answer. If it's not in their annual report, try to find, just try to find it generally by Googling, okay? Uh, <coughs> When we, have, when we find out, sometimes we see rest of the world, or Europe, or South America. If you go to the PPT of the country risk premium, there is written the uh, country risk for average for South America, average for Europe. Okay? So you're able to find that information there. Uh, the more complicated thing is the, is the debt calculating the market value of debt. If there's no information about the market value of debt, you can't find it in the 10K, right? I have a document on the internet about this in beta, under beta. We have the assignment here, okay? Assignment and another page for the market value of debt calculation, okay? But if you can't find the market value of debt, there's no information in the 10K. Later I can just quickly look at your company's 10K, okay? And if I see that there's no information there for the debt, you couldn't calculate the debt, then it's okay. Then just use the book value of debt. Where can we find the book value of debt? Where can we see the book value of debt? What financial document shows us the book value of debt? Income statement will show us revenue, cost, and profit. What's the other financial document? The balance sheet will show us debt. We see debt on the balance sheet, right? That's the book value of debt. So if you can't calculate the market value, if it's not in the 10K, then you can use, just use the book value. But uh, you can check here on the assignment. Some people told me some link wasn't working. 
and I asked them, did you type in the link or did you copy and paste it from here? They said, I typed it in. So if you type in the link, there's going to be some problem. It's very long and complicated, right? So just go open this document, copy and paste the link, okay? For the tables. Does anybody have any other questions? No, then let's continue with uh, return. If you'd like after the class, you can ask me some other questions. <coughs> so last time, we basically summed up talking about return. But what we're going to do today is we're going to look at another company, Arab Cruise and Simpson Technology. And also we're going to look at uh, uncertainty in project analysis. Because we made this analysis, but we're not sure how, many, how much revenue we're going to get, or that kind of thing. The future is not sure. So, let's first of all talk about the uncertainty in uh, uh, project analysis. So, based on our expected cash flows, the estimated cost of capital the team park investment, we said, looks like a good investment for Disney. Yes, we should take this investment. But which, which of these may affect our decision? Revenues could be overestimated. Costs could be higher than what we thought. Tax rate might go up. Interest rate might go up. Risk premium and default spread might increase. Brazil has some crisis. All of the above. What do you think is the answer here? Anybody? Yes? Which of these things can change, change our, idea, our decision? We decided, yes, invest in the theme park, right? Which of these could change our decision? Maybe all of them. All of them, right? We could have been too optimistic about our revenue. The revenue could be less. Brazil could have some prices. The cost could go up. The salary in Brazil could go up quickly. These days in China, the wage is going up, right? The tax rates might go up. So all of those things are uncertain. So the second part of the question, how would you respond to this uncertainty? Do you understand uncertainty? What's another way in English to say uncertain? Another way to say uncertain in English? Not sure. Not sure. Do you understand not sure? Yes. Okay, so how would you respond to this unsureness or uncertainty? You're going to wait for the uncertainty to be resolved, wait for the uncertainty to finish. Don't take the investment, meant ignore the uncertainty, or try to better understand the uncertainty. What are you going to do? Okay, hands up, who is going to wait for the uncertainty to be finished? You have to choose one, okay? Who is going to just Forget it, don't take the investment, it's too uncertain. Some people. Who's going to just ignore it? Just ignore it, doesn't matter. One person. Who's going to try to better understand the uncertainty? Okay, so most people have the right answer. This is better than ignoring it, right? We're kind of ignoring it, but trying to understand it better. So, <coughs> if we... If we just wait, this is not going to work because this uncertainty is never going to be resolved. We'll never make the investment. The second one, don't take the investment. Some people might say, don't take the investment, but we already accounted for risk of Brazil in the country risk premium, in the cost of capital, right? When we made our cost of capital, we already calculated the country risk premium for Brazil. So. We think that, looking at this investment, yes, we, we already looked at the risk and we said our return is higher than the risk, okay? So we can, this investment looks like an investment which gives a better return than the risk we take. So it would be a shame not to take the investment, okay? We, we should take the investment. But we try to, try to understand about the uncertainty. So one way is, uh, finding out how quickly we can get our money back. This is called a payback. So some companies like to use this way. 
because they say at least after this many years I get my money back. So at least I won't lose money. So this is better to use the discount payback. Uh, so basically we get our cash flow and we look at how much money we put in at the start and then we find out when is that equals to zero. When do we start to make a profit? Okay, and in, if we just use the regular cash, we start to make a profit after 10 years. But if we use the discounted payback, we, go, we get our money back after 17 years. But as we know, this is a theme park, so we, the theme park will keep going more than 17 years. So this is why we had a positive net present value. So if we look at the, uh, if we look at an example on the restaurant, we have one, two, three, four, five years. We invest one million dollars in the restaurant. Okay, it's a big restaurant. Then in the first year, I'm going to get two hundred thousand. Year two, three hundred thousand. Year three, five hundred thousand. Year four, five hundred thousand. And year five, five hundred thousand. In this case, just if I if I'm not thinking about discounted payback, what year is my payback in this case? Can anybody tell me? What year is my payback? I get all my money back. After the third year. After the third year, two hundred plus three hundred plus five hundred equals one million. Okay? So I get my money back here. That's called my payback period. It's three years. So some companies like to calculate their payback period. But what is more accurate is going to be discounted payback. Discounted payback will be, uh, let's say that my interest rate is 10%, right? Then year one, this is going to be 180,000, okay? Year two, how much is this going to be? We need to do the calculation, okay? 240,000. Year three, and so on, okay? So using present value to find a discounted payback. If we find that, it's probably going to be year four. Discounted payback. So, let's do the calculation and I want you to tell me, if the interest rate is 10%, what year is the discounted payback for this restaurant? Or when is the discounted payback? for this restaurant. So you need to find the present value of this, of this, of this, of this, of this. And find out when do they add together to pay back my original investment. Okay? So do this calculation now. It's present value calculation. So everybody should do this calculation. Okay? If you should be able to do this. Again, if any calculation we do on the class could be in the exam. I could ask you when is the discounted payback? I'll give you this set of numbers and ask you when is the discounted payback? Are you able to do the calculation? Okay. So just find the present value of the cash flow of each year. Okay. And then tell me when is the discounted payback?
to find the present value of these cash flows. So we'll just follow this step for the moment. Okay? So find the present value of these cash flows. Okay? Can you do that? Please pay attention. So, the first year it's going to be 200, the cash flow after year one, over 1 plus the interest rate. The interest rate is 10%. 10% is 0 0.1, okay? Times 1. What's the answer? 182. 183. What's the next year? It's 300 over. 1.1 times 2. It's after 2 years. What's the answer? Uh, 258. 258. Oh, 48. 48. Yeah. What about the next year, year 3? 376. That's going to be 500 over 1.1 to the power of 3. It's going to be 376. What about the next year? 500 over 1.1 to the power of 4. What's the answer? 342. Hmm? 342. 
Okay, we can see that here it's the same, 500 and 500. But is 500 in year 3 the same as 500 in year 4? No. No, we have inflation, we have risk, we have real interest rate, okay? So it's not. Then the last year, also 500. What's the cash flow? 310. 310. So this is called discounted cash flow. This is cash flow. The cash flow means the money I'm getting in every year. And this is called discounted. Do you understand discount in English? Discount in the shop, you go, you get a discount, 20% discount. Okay? This is discounted by 10%. Year one, okay? Ten percent year two, right? So on. Squared. So we have discounted cash flow. So payback in this one is just uh, to here, but this is discounted payback. It's more accurate. We're using time value of money. So how we want to find out? This is minus one million. We spent minus one million on the restaurant, okay? So in that we got 183, 248, three. When do we get our money back? That's the question. When do we get our money back? So, if we add them together, what's this? This plus this plus this plus this? 1,148. So, it's going to be uh, 1,148,000 after year four. Okay? So, slightly before year four. So, we could say, Maybe three years and nine months. Okay? Can you understand? Yes. If we add these cash flows together, we get more than one million. So it means that we got back more than we invested. We have to use the discounted cash flow because we are comparing one million today's money. One million today's money. So we have to change all of this back to today's money to make a comparison. Okay? Then when do we get our money back? after four years. Do you want to make this investment? Yes or no? Do you want to make this investment? Yes. Yes? Yes. How long are you going to have the restaurant for? One year. One year. If we look at five years, does it have a net positive or negative net present value? Positive. It'll have a positive one, right? This is over one million. Already in year four, even if we did four years, it would have positive net present value will tell us to take the investment, okay? So this is one way of dealing with uncertainty. We're not sure about our restaurant business. Is it going to be good business or bad business? We're not sure about the revenue. We're not sure about the economy. The economy could go badly, okay? So this is one way of dealing with uncertainty. We say, anyway, after four years, we'll get our money back. Or after three years and nine months, we'll get our money back. So I think I can take this restaurant. Okay? Even if things are bad, I'll get most of my money back by five years anyway. Okay? So it's just another measure of, of looking at the project and saying, is it a good idea to take the project or not? So discounted payback period. Okay? Can everybody do this calculation? If I give you this question, can you do it yes. now? No. no? <laughs> Why not? What's the difficult part? So if I just write the word discounted payback, discounted payback, right? So here the discounted payback period period is going to be three years, nine months. Right? Or less than, you can just write less, less than four years is okay. Okay? So less than four years. We're going to get our money back. So if you see this, discounted payback period, you should, we did this in class, so you know we're talking about this calculation. Okay? Can you do this calculation now? Or do you need to, me to, to tell you all the steps? If you can't do this calculation, you need to go back and review time value of money. Okay? How to find the present value. There's video online, okay, and also exercises. Check again how to find the present value of a cash flow in the future. Everybody should know that. 
Okay, if I give you money in four, four years, how much is it worth today? You should be able to tell me that. Okay? Do you understand? Yes. Then if you know that, you can find the present value of the cash flows, add them together. Right? We have to add them together when we're finding the NPV, very similar to the NPV equation, net present value. And then we find out when is it equals to zero. Right? So when is my cut? This is minus at the start. This is plus. So when is it equals to zero? That's a key point. When do cash flows equal zero? If you want, you can write that down. When do cash flows equal zero? That's discount to payback period. That's what that question means. That's what I'm asking you. When are the total cash flows? What point in time are the total cash flows equals to zero? Do you want me to write the question like this instead of asking you when is the discount to payback period? But anyway, in financial world, they're going to use this vocabulary. So you need to know this vocabulary. Okay? So I can try to make the question more clear in the exam. So I'll try to make the question more clear. But uh, you need to practice this if you're not sure how to do it. Okay? So let's look at this is the Disney example. So we have the cash flow every year. And here we have the present value of the cash flow. What we just did, we had the cash flow and the present value. So cash flow is year one is one. 1,000. Present value is 921. Okay? Disney's rate was about 8.6% cost of capital. Okay? So we find all of those. And then here is the accumulated. So this is going to be at the start, we had minus 2 billion, right? So minus, so accumulated. This is minus, this is minus, it's getting worse. Then finally, it starts to, it gets all the way down to zero, right? It starts to come back. These start to become positive numbers. It starts to come back. And where does it hit zero? Here. Okay? This is cumulative. Do you understand cumulative? No. Cumulated. Cumulated means added together. Added together. Okay? Cumulate means to add together. So we add together every year's present value of their cash flow 2000 minus 921 minus 729 minus 200 plus 200, plus 300, plus 300, and so on, until we hit zero. Where do we hit zero for Disney? 17.7 years later. Okay. But we expect the theme park, we expect the theme park to last for 30 or 40 years. Okay. So even though Disney doesn't get their money back, it seems like a long time, for 18 years, but we, we still calculated we should do this project, because it had a positive net present value taking into account the longer time. Do you think this is useful, payback period? To know when we get our money back? How long it takes to get our money back? Is that useful? Yes. Right? It's a little bit useful. But it's not, NPV is more useful, right? NPV is more useful. This is just some aid or help. Just letting us know when. When do you get the money back that I invested? How long will it take? get my money back. Do you want to know if you start a restaurant? Do you want to know how long it will take to get your money back? Yes? Okay, then you can do this calculation. So that you can see the title here. See how quickly you can get your money back after you invest somewhere. Okay. Uh, next way we can do is we can do uh, sensitivity analysis and what if questions. So we can see how does the NPV change when our variables change. Do you understand variable? Yeah. How do you say variable in English, in Korean? A variable, something that changes. Jongsu huh? is changing, right? What is something that changes? A thing that changes. What are variables in Disney's project? What could change? What do you think are important things that could change in Disney's plan? Electricity. Electricity fee could change, but maybe not that important. What's more important that could change, be different? 
What are the most important things when we look at the income statement? We have the income statement that Disney started with when they started to make their plan. Revenues. Is revenues important? Yes. Is that very important? Yes. Is that variable? Or is it going to be the same as our plan? Variable. Variable, right? What's all the other things we have? Costs. What about costs? Is that important? Yes. Is that going to be variable? Yes. They are variables. They can change. So we are going to change our variable in some computer program and see what happens when we change our revenues up 20% or down 20%. Then what NPV will we get, right? If we do this in Microsoft Excel or in a computer program, it's quite easy to change the things and then uh, check. So when analyzing the effect of changing one variable, we hold the other things constant. But in the real world, variables move together. So this is just helping us to understand. It, it might not be ideal either. So the objective in this analysis is that we make better decisions, not to create more tables and numbers. So here we can see uh, actual revenues as a percent of forecasted revenues. So revenues can change. This is a probability analysis. So here we think, uh, this is what we think. Revenues will be here, 100%. Okay? But revenues could be higher. Could be up to 120%. Revenues could be lower. They could be down, we think, to 80%. So we make the parameter. We say, well, the revenues could be worse, but I still think we'll have 80% minimum. It won't go below 80%. Okay? And then at the top, you say our revenues could be better, but probably won't go before more than 120%. Okay? Then this probability means what's the probability of this? 80%, 100%. You could make a diagram like this, where you think it's more likely to get 100%, less likely to get 80%, less likely to get 120 But in this case, Disney thinks they're really not sure about their revenues. What they're saying is it could be anywhere from 80 to 120 with equal probability. Equal probability. Do you understand probability? Yeah. How do you say probability in Korean? How do you say equal probability? Dong Yu. So here is all Dong Yu about the revenue. They're, they're not sure about the revenue, right? So we can make this kind of diagram. Then over here, we can write the risk premium. The risk premium for Brazil could change. There could be some crisis in Brazil. That's another variable that could change. In our cost of capital, Cost of capital, we had our cost of equity, we had the risk free rate plus beta times the risk premium. Okay, the country risk premium for Brazil can change. Why could the country risk premium for Brazil change? Why could the country risk premium for Brazil change? What could happen to make this higher? Why does Brazil have a country risk premium? They might be bad. Hmm? Yes, but what causes this number to go up in Brazil? Paris. Hmm? Paris. Paris risk. Politics, econ economics, right? So Brazil, what kind of political risk could happen in Brazil? Strike. Strikes, right? Those kind of things could happen, put up this risk premium. So our cost of capital gets higher. So we think currently the risk premium is 10%. So what are the chances that it will go up? We think probably it will stay around 10%, highest probability. But there's a low chance, very small chance it could go 13%, okay? The Brazilian government could fall, there could be military coup, right? Who knows, in uh, Egypt there was a military coup. Probably not in Brazil, but there might be a 1% chance or 2% chance. Do you think there could be military coup in Korea? 
There was a military coup in Korea in the 1980s, right? You had military government. So if we have that, that could be a, bit a risk. Okay, over here Brazil could get safer, right? So it could go the other way. So we just make a probability estimate, guess. And then the other main thing is costs, expenses. We said that our expenses should be 60% of the revenue. Okay, but, so here, 60%, highest probability. But our costs could be higher than 60% of revenue, or lower than 60% of revenue. So we're just making this kind of entering, this. we can see this on the graph, but we're entering these numbers into Excel, making a probability estimate. And we're going to run this into a simulation, into a computer program. In this case, the computer program is called Crystal Ball. So we put all of this data into the computer program. Okay, this kind of revenues, this kind of cost of capital changes, and this kind of uh, operating expense percent changes. Then we run 10,000 simulations, right? 10,000 random simulations. Do you understand random simulation? How do you say random simulation in Korea? How do you say simulation? Random simulation means the computer program just runs and takes any number, right? If the computer program runs, and maybe this time it will take this number, 85%, and this one, 9%, and this one, 50%, okay? Will our net present value be higher or lower? Our revenues are lower, but our cost is lower, and our expenses is lower, so maybe about the same. On another time, it could take the number from here, take a number from here, or take a number from here, with this probability. So that's a random simulation. So when we run this random simulation, we find out these net present values. At the best, in the best case scenario, in the best case scenario, we are going to have revenues of 120%, risk premium of just 7%, and <coughs> Expenses of just 40% of our part. That's the best case situation. Then what's our net present value? It's going to be 9 billion won. Very high, 9 billion dollars, right? In the worst case situation, we're going to lose money. Okay? Lower than zero, minus three, three billion. So what's the worst case situation? Worst case situation, our revenues are 80%. Brazil's uh, premium goes up to 13%. Co the expenses are more expenses, 80% of our revenues. In that case, we're going to lose money. Okay? So this just tells us what is the chances. So if we look at this graph, it's information helping us. What I can see from this graph is that below zero, below zero, zero is here, is a very small part of the graph. Are you willing to take this risk? It's just a small part, a very small part that could be below zero. If our revenues are down to 80%, if our cost is 80% of revenues, if Brazil has a political problem, then we lose money. Okay, but only if all those three things happen. Okay? So this is just helping us to understand the uncertainty. Even though we have uncertainty, in the worst case scenario, do you understand worst case scenario? Worst case, so we, in the worst case scenario, we will lose money, but it's not very, it doesn't happen very often in the simulation. Most of the time, we're making money, and sometimes we're making more money. This is what we expand our net present value to be, around 3 billion. So, uh, do you have any question about this? Kind of simulation using probability. So then uh, make sure that you check the attendance list. Where is the attendance list? Over here. And then uh, if you have any question about your project, then you can ask me.